Once a writer creates a likable hero, it's tough having to mistreat him. We're human. We want to see this interesting, sympathetic underdog get a break, and that's perfectly understandable. But a good story demands conflict, so LJ has to withstand a little more physical, emotional, or mental abuse. When we left LJ, he was facing down his arch enemy, Tretch, to defend the neighbor's dog. John Hammer screams Miss Wallace, the lady who owns Sparks. What are you doing to my little dog? I guess she can't see that I'm doubled over in pain, rubbing the spot where Tretch's rock nearly made a hole in my leg. People pretty much see what they want to see. Hello there, Miss Wallace, Tretch called back. I didn't have to look to know he'd done his quick change act, putting on the mealy mouth smile he uses to convince adults he's an okay kid instead of the drooling, slithering monster he really is. LJ was poking Sparks with a stick, he says, but I took care of it, Miss Wallace. He won't bother your little dog anymore. How does he make his voice go all surpy like that? The slingshot out of sight in his back pocket, that smarthy smile and that sugary voice. Teachers and parents believe his every word. The pain in my leg makes me want to puke, and I almost wish I would just so I could take aim and projectile vomit all over the puny jerk. Thank you, Timothy, Miss Wallace says, then calls Sparks who has continued to bark sporadically. But don't you think you're getting off that easy, John Hammer? I plan to tell your parents exactly what you were doing. Disgust for my own cowardice beats down the nausea, and my legs stop feeling like limp spaghetti. Trying to set Miss Wallace straight will only make it worse. With grown-ups, Tretch is a magician, all smoke and mirrors and fast hands. I have a job for you, he says when she's gone. Don't need a job, don't want a job. What he wants is for me to put a scare in some kid who won't pony up half his allowance just because Tretch wants it. I've done it before. One look at me puffed up like an angry toad and most kids would cough up a lung if I wanted. Tretch has to get hands on to be scary, even to little kids. Besides, he likes the idea of having muscle backing him up. He calls me his hammer, but I don't like it, and I won't do it again. I start to walk away. Who do you think will get the blame when Miss Wallace finds little sparks with his throat cut? I stop. Tretch laughs. When I turn around, he backs up a little. Tretch is a coward face to face. But even if I beat him bloody, he'll still be there hiding around corners, and it's after you turn your back that Tretch gets really vicious. I think people who are born evil get handed an instruction manual the rest of us never see. Smarten up, LJ, he says, his grin as evil as ever. You know I always get what I want. The more trouble a writer heaps on a worthy hero, the more a reader will want to see the villain get pummeled. And the only way to find out what happens next, of course, is to turn another page.